brought to you by Yukatsu. My name is Joe. I'll be your MC tonight. One of the co-founders of Yukatsu. Happy and proud to bring you one of the first ever live esports events in the nation. So round of applause for that. That's incredible. We are making history. Of course, tonight we have two very competitive teams, Battle High School versus the home team, Hickman High School. And we've got a lot of representatives from Rockbridge, too. I see you. <laughs> so, of course, esports is a fairly new thing for the high school competitive scene. And in case you didn't know about it, we've actually prepared a video uh, to help explain some of the rules that go into League of Legends, the game that these kids are going to play tonight. So let's go ahead and roll that video. On behalf of Yukatsu and Columbia Public Schools, we'd like to welcome you to this esports event. We understand a few of you may oh, be new streams. to League of Legends <laughs> and esports, so here's a quick introduction. First things first, esports is specifically the competitive sector of video gaming, where teams recruit players to compete head to head, and in the past few years, it's been gaining a lot of traction. Big investment money is going into top teams to recruit the best professionals in the world. Celebrities like Shaquille O'Neal, Alex Rodriguez, Steve Aoki, and even Ashton Kutcher are putting money into professional teams or esports software. As the professional scene grows, so do the scenes underneath it. Colleges are now offering scholarships to talented players, and programs like Yukatsu are serving youth levels. Esports covers a wide variety of video game titles, but none are currently bigger than League of Legends, the games that these kids are playing today. League of Legends is a free-to-play, team-based computer game. This is the map, Summoner's Rift. Think of it as the field or court that every competitive game of League is held on. Teams start at two opposing corners of the map, and the game is won when one team successfully pushes all the way to the other team's base and destroys the main structure, called a Nexus. There are three lanes on Summoner's Rift. A top lane, a middle lane, and a bottom lane as well as a forested area between the lanes called a jungle. To get to the base, each team will have to deal with a number of defenses. This includes minions, defensive towers equipped with turrets, and of course, the opposing team members. Players on each team each control one character throughout the entirety of the match. They pick their characters before the match even starts, and with over 130 characters to choose from, each with their own unique abilities and attributes, finding the right blend of characters is vital to a balanced team composition. All players begin the match at level 1, with the same amount of gold to purchase items to boost their individual statistics. Killing minions and jungle monsters, destroying towers, and of course, killing enemy team players awards gold and experience points to level up and buy more powerful items. Teams must work together to earn gold, take down objectives, and ambush enemy players so that they can eventually reach the enemy nexus to win. Each match usually takes anywhere between 25 to 45 minutes, though close standstills can last even longer. Our format for today's exhibition is a best of three, with each game beginning in a pick and ban phase where players choose their characters to play and ban out the characters they wouldn't want to go up against. We've only scratched the surface of what there is to know about League of Legends, but that should cover all the basics for now. Pay attention to what the play-by-play -play and color commentators have to say, and you'll pick it up in no time. Thanks for watching our introduction to League and Esports. We hope you enjoy the match. Again, I'd like to make an announcement on behalf of Yukatsu and CPS. Uh, in case you didn't know, we held an exhibition match on September 8th, and it went spectacularly. Rockbridge was there. <laughs> so we are proud to announce that as of that exhibition match, Yukatsu has officially partnered with Columbia Public Schools to bring a nine-week season of League of Legends between at least all three of the high schools in town which will also lead to a district-wide tournament with trophies and maybe even scholarship money. Yeah! Hey, yeah, God, yeah. So on that note, without further ado, let's get the music rolling. 
we're going to introduce the two teams that are playing tonight. Representing battle in the top lane is Aaron Mobius Monroe. <laughs> Playing the jungle position for Battle High School. Next up, Lewis Purple Mist of Doom Portillo. Holding in the mid lane comes Cameron Ruling Ocean Clap. Should clap for that. Following in the ADC position, brother of the mid lane, comes Gabriel Vicious Lemurs Clap. Finally, rounding out the support position in a sudden substitute scenario will be Austin Joe Mama Beckman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your team representing battle tonight. Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Yes, go ahead and have a seat. Yes, have a seat. All right. Next up comes the home team advantage, Hickman Cupies. Who's representing Hickman tonight? Nice, nice. First up in the top lane, we have the famous Michael Dark Quacker. Zo! Representing the jungle position for Hickman High School, we now have Tofik TTP Fabi! After comes the mid lane, representing Hickman QPs would be Alex Alahero James! Hoping to carry Hickman into another victory, we have Matthew Gosubot. Perkins! Last but not least, in the support role, we have Renee Cookie Tellman! Ladies and gentlemen, this is your Hickman squad representing you tonight. Let's give them a round of applause. You guys can have a seat. Have a seat. You guys can have a seat. All right, so. With those two teams announced, we'd like to kick it over to our commentary, which, by the way, if you didn't already know, are your sponsors for Hickman League of Legends teams, as well as the principal himself. Everyone, go ahead and stand up, guys. Give yourselves a round of applause for our sponsors and our principals doing the color and play-by-play -play commentary tonight, because they do play League of Legends. All right, kick it over to you guys. All right. So, my name is Mr. G. I will be one of your announcers, and this is... Uh, I'm Mr. Soper. Welcome, everybody. So, just to give us kind of a rundown here. Uh, what we're going to go into is right now, they're going to start picks and bans, but the way we spectate in this game, we will be three minutes behind the main game. Uh, so, whenever what will happen here is we'll go into the game, um, then we'll see picks and bands, and then there will be a three-minute countdown before we get rolling. Um, so while we do that, we're going to kind of just run through some different things and some things that we're really interested in watching. So, Soap, you and I were talking about before a game, there's a matchup in this game that we're super excited to see. Yeah, absolutely. If you were here the last time on September 8th, you saw Dark Quacker absolutely dominate the top lane. Uh, but what happened... <laughs> But what happens tonight, uh, he's actually going to face up against somebody that's probably just as good as he is in Kalizga, and I am really excited to watch that. So in, in the league series, in the, in the um, rank system, they go by different medals that are, um, that's how they distinguish ranks, so, well, not elements, I guess would be what I should say. And Dark Quacker and Kalizga are both in the diamond category, which puts them in the best of the top 10% in the United States. Oh, no, it's even better than that. It's like top 1%. It's, That's, it's pretty crazy how good these guys are. How about are. somewhere between 1 and 10%? Six and a half. That works for me. 
So we're, we're really excited to see that, that matchup. Uh, we also, for those who were here at the last match, we have two new subs. So I'm really interested to see how uh, Cookie and uh, TTP fill in here because they were not a part of the original QP squad that took on Rockbridge. No, they weren't. And I think they're both, they've been coming to club. They've been showing up for the two years that we've been holding it at Hickman. And I, I'm really excited for them to finally get their chance to step out on the stage and, and, and join the team and really uh, step forward and play well. So I'm, I, I have no idea who TTP will pick. I know that when we did our 1v1 tournament at Hickman, it seemed to be he was always playing uh, Lee Sin. And so we could see a Lee Sin. And I know that uh, Kuki has been really, really favoring those shielding supporting uh, supports. So maybe a Jana or a Lulu, something around that lane uh, that we could watch out for. I know Arden Sensor is really strong on this patch. So if we're going to get talking about items real early, you know how much I like those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Soper is very talented in being able to identify items on teams much better than I. And then, of course, we have the Battle Squad, which we really don't know anything about. We know that Kalizga is going to be strong in the top lane against Dark Quacker, which we're really looking forward to. But they also have a sub here at, at support um, who's still, you know, kind of figuring out their way in the game. So that could be a key matchup here uh, that we need to focus on that maybe uh, Gosu Bot and uh, Cookie are able to take advantage of early. Well, I, we can safely say for the first time, we're actually going to have brothers competing on the same team. So we, yeah, we got a family affair. Yeah, they, clearly their communication has to be top tier. I mean, I, at least I would hope that I would communicate. Yeah, maybe they're brother. on some sort of brother level. They don't even need to use chat. Uh, that would be awesome. It'd be weird. It'd be a silent br uh, battle team up there. <laughs> so are we are we a little bit delayed? Are we good to go? Or? Okay. Okay. We're going to... We're going to continue working through our technical problems. Let who know. Uh, we are, so if you guys didn't, out here in the audience didn't know, we use a chat system called Discord in order to talk amongst the teams up here. Um, right now we're having some small technical difficulties with their Discord. Once we get that figured out, we're going to get started. Um, everybody that plays video games understands technical issues. That seems to happen pretty yeah. Pretty common. And then the other thing that we need to keep in mind is this is a unique opportunity that, you know, our students are presented to that we're still w working out the glitches and how to do this. So this is our second affair. So we really appreciate your patience. We know we're getting started a little bit late, uh, but we do, you know, want to thank Yukatsu because their production is top notch. Um, myself and Mr. Sober have been playing games, video games for quite a while, and we were never given this opportunity. Uh, we also want to point out that the crowd last time for the Rockbridge uh, Hickman game was pretty awesome. Yeah. And I don't mean to be harsh, but we're definitely going to need to step up our energy whenever the game starts because that group brought it. So let's make sure we're really supporting our players as we as we grow. Oh, here we go. All right. We're going into picks and bans here. Yeah. Oh, oh hey, hey, hey. There we are. It was great. I wasn't ready for that. So no surprise here right off the bat. So what they're doing is they're banning. So the battle side took their first ban. They banned a character named Darius, oh. uh, which is targeted at, at Dark Quacker. And then uh, Hickman follows it up with a Vladimir ban. I'm not sure who plays that on the uh, battle side, but clearly they do not want to be dealing with the vampire. Right. So Vlad is a, is a tanky almost caster. He could play mid or top. So it follows with a Rakan. Rakan ban. So we're going to get rid of the support in the bottom lane. So that Kuki would have been playing that one. And uh, I, I really we're going to need to see these next couple bands before we start finally getting the shape of what these teams are going to look like. That's a big difference from our last game. I really thought we would see some more targeted bands at Quacker here in, I, in the first three. I, I did as well. I thought we would see five top lane. Okay. A Sona. Sona. Uh, I didn't even know she was relevant in the meta. Uh, well, I mean, with Art, I mean, with Arden Sensor, anybody that's got a heal is relevant. Uh, Swain, Swain, that's one of my favorite champions. It's sad we're not going to see that played. Uh, that's typically played in the middle lane. He kind of broods and grafts everybody and transforms into this giant raven. So we've seen uh, the Hickman group take away maybe a mid or top laner as well as a support. So I'm curious here if they maybe have a ban target at Kalizga and limiting his champ pool. Another support ban. We're gonna see some interesting supports here. Yeah, this is gonna definitely go into your repertoire with the, with those taken out. Oh, and Shin. Okay, so we're gonna pick up Shin in the top lane. Shin is for uh, Battle High School. The most amazing thing about Shin is he has this ability to be anywhere on the map at any time with this global teleport of his. 
And so he can be split pushing in one lane and then suddenly appear in another lane ganking somebody. So something to also keep in mind here, Shen is what's called a tank. He's a bit beefier, he can take a bit of damage, he's going to try to initiate. From the Hickman side, we have a Jarvan, which is one of Dark Quacker's favorite champions up top, as well as Tristana, who will be at the bottom. Jarvan is also a tanky champ, and so Tristana's going to be the one putting down the damage. And there's your boy Rammus oh, getting locked in. I really wanted to see this roly-poly looking turtle thing uh, out on the rift. Uh, I'm really excited to see this. It's, he's going to he's moving. He moves fast. Yeah. So if you guys are fans or have ever played Mario Brothers, you're going to see a Koopa looking like thing that goes around the map. And he's another one that can take some damage as well as uh, you know take a beating and, and tank and initiate. So and it looks like the two middle lanes are actually going to get picked by the middle laners here. Uh, Oriana is kind of this uh, caster. She's got this ball that she moves around and uses to do damage. And then Hickman's going to counter that with a Galio pick. He's another big, tanky uh, mid laner. Okay, so Callista goes off, and that is another damage dealer that's taken away. It's interesting, we're seeing the comp here. We got two beefy champions with, with some damage. So we got definitely a double, double tank, double initiation, but then also some peel. Uh, when you hear me for those new, when I say peel, uh, peel means getting back and uh, protecting your squishies, those who take damage. Really interesting ban there with the Sejuani. Looking at Hickman's uh, team here, I, I wouldn't see Sejuani necessarily as, as relevant in this comp. Well, I mean, they still do need a jungler, and she's really strong right now. Um, it looks Hogma. like it looks like Hickman bans away two AD carries so that they can't play Kalista and they can't play Kogma, and then. Maokai taken off, who's another one of those initiate tanky uh, type champs. So Bat Battle is getting rid of all of the tanks. So it looks like Hickman may end up running with just a single tank composition here, whereas Battle is loading up on lots of health, lots of resistances. Um, they're going to need to pick up some kind of damage dealer. There's the gra Oh. Zach, oh. in the, Zach can be in the jungle there. Again, real beefy. He excels at jumping into that back line and just creating havoc. He can bounce around as a big green blob. If you are a fan of Flubber, you are really going to enjoy Zach. And then the Caitlyn pick. Uh, long range champ can use those traps to really control the flow of the fight. Uh, so that, that's, that, that does not surprise me. Um, they are going to need some sort of champion to help with this you know, dive with the Galio. Are they, gonna, are they going to pick an Annie support? They are. There is going to be some hard engage yeah. out of the out of the Annie support here. That's kind of exciting to see. So I think battle strategy is they're just going to throw everything at it and see what they can stun and lock I, down. I and love there's, it. And there is Cookie. She was warming up on Nami. Um, yeah. And Nami will be the support. What does she bring to the table, Mr. Soper? Well, when Annie drops her giant bear and stuns a lot of people, Nami is really going to need to counter engage. Uh, hopefully kind of CC some people away from her Tristana. In addition, she's got this amazing bubble that she can uh, kind of root some people up into the air, which really allows Galio and Zack and Jarvin. Can Look at the dive yeah, that's on almost, that that's team. A, that's exactly what I was saying. Is you almost have two comps that are built for the opposite things. You have the uh, battle comp, which is looking almost to start a fight on that front line and hold that front line with their taunts and their stuns. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, it looks like that uh, the Hickman comp is more trying to dive towards the bot to get behind you it, it, and really and really initiate there using Galio, Zach, and then um, you know set up the dunk with Jarvin. If, if you are Caitlyn and Oriana and you're standing you next to each other, you need to be far away from each other because they're coming after you. But at the same time, it would not shock me if you see this Ramus or this Shin just flash in taunt, because they both have taunts. They're, they're going to rely on a pick. They're going to need a pick. So yeah. here, this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, just to update you. We are in that delay, so you can see that we're counting down. So we will get started in 2 minutes and 45 seconds. We'll be on the rip. Um, so what other things do we see from the, from the comp here that may be unique? Well, I mean... It's we know Ramus is going to start at the blue buff, and we'll kind of get into explaining some buffs uh, once we see the map and we can get some, uh, looking at that. But we know Ramus is going to probably typically have to start on a blue buff, but Zach has the ability to start anywhere. So what I'm kind of hoping is that these two junglers just meet up in the jungle and have it out for each other. Um, so that could be really, really exciting.
Okay, so some people who are, are new in the crowd to League, one of the things I want to draw your attention to, and you can see it with the Shen on the right side and the turtle looking guy, those spells to the to their side of them, those are what are called uh, summoner skills. So Shen, um, in addition to having an ability where he can teleport around the map, he also took teleport, which allows him to teleport around the map. Um, you'll see Rammus has that little fist with the, like, the fireball coming out of it. That is Smite, which indicates that he's in the jungle and he can do extra damage to uh, the jungle minions. Uh, you also have Orianna. All these champs have what's called Flash, which allows them to jump from one spot to another really quickly. But Orianna went with Ghost as well. So this has been a traditional mid lane thing for a little bit over a year now. Um, mid laners have been taking Ghost so that they can transition to the side lanes. Because if, mm. if, if there's a fight that starts in the bottom lane, uh, if Orianna has Ghost and Galio doesn't, that means that she's going to beat that Galio to that lane. Um, and be able to influence that fight down there. In addition, uh, the cooldown on Ghost is a lot shorter than the cooldown on Flash. Mm. And so, if you just need to get out real quick and don't want to bother with flashing, uh, you can run. You can hit Ghost. You can run down the uh, down the river. You can do a little bit of. It, it helps you dodge a bit. Uh, it's a good choice. I'm a little shocked that I didn't see a cleanse yeah. in the middle lane, especially with all of that hard engage that the uh, the Hickman team is bringing. So the other term that we want to make sure some of our new members are um, familiar with is what's called ganking. So you will see other lanes or even the jungle try to sneak up and get a sneak attack in, and we refer to that as a gank. So when you hear us say they're, they're ganking that lane, and that's why I thought Orianna maybe went with the ghost and the flash, because uh, in being that mid laner, if you're afraid of the jungle, that gives you a little bit, like you were saying, mobility to, to avoid those ganks. Mm -hmm. We also see Caitlyn with the heal, which is what you expect from an AD carry, and then Annie with the exhaust. Are you guys ready? We're getting close. And wait for it. Wait for it. We're still waiting. Mm. Hey. hey! Here we go. Hey, remember where I talked about we wanted to be louder than the last crowd? So here, let's get up. Let's let's pull the audience. How many people are rooting for a battle victory? Okay. How many people are rooting for a QP victory? I would say that was pretty close. There, <laughs> there, there, <laughs> I think somebody was. <laughs> is someone demanding a recount? <laughs> All right, uh, here we are on the rift. We got a couple things that we're going to set up real quick for your viewing pleasure. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Looks good. So this is the battle team, and so we got Hickman on the red side. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to shoot around, and we're going to look at all the uh, individual characters here so that we can uh, kind of identify who's who. So real fast, we're going to point out Shen in the top lane here. Uh, Mr. G, do you want to take this over? So, so this I... is Kal Kalizga. He's Shen. He's in the top lane, so he's a ninja. He throws swords. And Uh-oh, hold on. We've got an invade going on down here. And so we're going to kind of focus huh? our character over here. I don't, think, I don't think we're going to see an invade. I think everybody's kind of no? playing this safe. So who we got on the screen now, if you see that shelled guy with the spikes, that's going to be Ramus. He's going to be the jungler for battle. So that's Purple Mist of Doom. That looks like Koopa. Yep. In addition, um, well, we'll get our camera back here. Perfect. Uh, there's also the Caitlyn, who is Vicious Lemurs, is hanging out in there. Now, those traps that she's put above there, hopefully somebody walks over those, and she's going to get to shoot them from a long ways away. And then up in the bush right above Caitlyn and Ramus, to the left, to the left. Oh, hold on. I got it. Let me uh, get the mouse So this here. is Rolling Ocean. He's on Oriana. And then we'll go ahead and let's introduce the Hickman squad as well, too. So. Um, there you have Gosu Bot. He's that little girl with a big gun. Um, Dark Quacker there on Jarvan, who carries a big spear. There's Flubber. That's TTP. Uh, he's playing on Zach. And then we have Renee. We need to get oh. down to Renee. Oh, oh, I got it. Uh, and there's Renee, and she is a fish. It's and true. she throws bubbles. And then our, the mid laner. All right. So here we go with all of our players introduced. Hopefully we all know and remember who we are. You'll see here, so this is what's called a leash. So Ramus is getting a little help. He started red side. Um, and you have Zach. You actually have both junglers starting on the red side here. Um, apparently neither one is worried about mana consumption. So that is a buff. The red buff will help them slow targets and do additional damage. 
Um, here's that matchup in the bot lane that we're really interested in, where we have you know some players that may be still figuring out the game, and then Galio, Oriana, mid. So you see that ball that uh, Oriana is moving around? That is pretty much her only source of damage other than auto-attacking characters. And again, we go into this... Oh, back to the middle lane. Here yeah, we go. And, and so what they're doing here is what's called trading, where you think about the dam or each character is going to exchange hits. And it's almost like a game of chicken. Who wants to see if they can take more damage? Oh, Quacker's a going Quacker's in for the early on kill. kill. This could be a first blood. The oh, flash taken away. Flash. Early. Ghost Bot's going on Vicious Lemurs here. That's Vicious a Lemurs really... getting low. And it they could be. In there. Oh, great no, heal. Oh, great heal. Great heal from Lemurs. That was clutch. Yep. And so we're, now we're going to look back in the top lane here. Quacker has kind of already blown the flash of our um, Shen. But you also have Rammus' top side. Now, uh, Shen is going to be vulnerable to a gank because he will not have that flash. And I believe he's also potted. Um, so one of his health pots is down. Uh, we have, looks like the top and the bottom lane are kind of shoved in. Hickman seems to be playing rather aggressive from the start. It, they do. They are playing rather aggressive. And the whole time, they, oh, hold on. Purple Mist of Doom is going to find Dark Quacker. That's a good taunt. Yeah, it is a good taunt. But uh, now, it does not look like the Shin is helping him out. No, it didn't. What Quacker just decided to bail on well, that. You know, he did have a large wave at his turret. He could have been just been trying to pick up some of the CS there, uh, which at times is probably more important. Um, now, if you look at this top lane, I don't know if you can see the map on the screen, but you'll see these little things uh, popping up called wards. And those wards are essential. See, right now, Rammus is coming up river. Great taunt by Shin. Uh -oh. Now, can Rammus get in here and get uh -oh. a taunt on Quacker? Quacker is in trouble. Is... This could be bad news. Oh, good the flash. flash from oh, Quacker. Taunt? Here's going to be a taunt. There's a taunt. And this and... might be first. Oh, oh, Quacker with the great Q and the E out of there. That is what's tricky about Jarvan is he has that dash. But that helps out with Kalizga because he now has taken uh, Dark Quacker's Flash, which kind of evens things yeah. out here. So he's going to go back to the base, get, heal up, and get some items. And I would assume as soon as that wave starts... Uh, oh, here he is. He's teleporting back already. Um, now here in the bottom lane, they are... Vicious Lemurs is just kind of getting pushed into the turret. So he's trying to pick up this CS while Gosubot is just really trying to get that wave to and start chipping away at that turret damage. So when we say CS, we're talking about what's called creep score. Okay, we got Alejo starting. He gets a taunt, does lay some massive Ooh. damage there on Oriana. They are really, really low. You know who's been missing we haven't seen so far is TTP. Well, now look at TTP. He's over on the blue side jungle. He looks like he may be setting up for a gank on the back side here. Yep, here it comes. It's going to be in the bottom lane. So this bot lane, when we get down there, they are going to push what's called that wave. So they're going to push their creeps all the way to the tower, and then they're going to try to kill those two on the battle team underneath their tower. It can be tricky because look, Rammus is coming down now as well too. There's going to be, a, there's a party so in the Zach bottom is, lane. Zach is here is cut out of bounds. We uh -oh. may see TTP Although, make it first down. blood. And we uh, also see Gosubot with a great flash. Oh my, here comes battle. Oh, great bubble by oh, Renee. Oh! Oh! Now that, okay. is Zach's, that is Zach's passive. He can almost revive here, but I don't think that's going to happen. No, We're I don't think see... so. And they gift the first blood over to Caitlyn, which is fantastic. She's going to get a really good jump start in that lane, and she's going to be able to buy some really good items. First blood over to battle. Uh, and that was, I would say, a failed uh, gank by TTP there. I agree. He spent some time down Alero there. Alero and Oriana. Oriana's got that ball, but she doesn't have the mana really to pull oh. off a kill here. And he's really, he's going to go back as well. I have been very, very impressed with Battle's start to this game. Yeah, Battle's done really well. They had some very coordinated uh, ganks as well as some counter I, ganks. I agree, and they've been turning it around, and it's looked really, really good. Uh, looks like Rammus is starting to come back up top. Uh oh. Uh, There's a ward Quacker there. He's should be get able spotted. to see his ward. Yeah, Rammus walked over, but oh, you got those taunt. taunts. You have those double taunts oh, here. Oh, and Rammus messes up his roll. He hits the uh, Now the we got Jarvan uh -oh. is six. Shin is not six this, here, but he is, be a two -one. he is low. He is low on man. Oh, 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 there's one kill. One. Can he get and, a double? Oh, that is dump. the quacker. The infamous quacker. When you come up, you better watch out for the duck. Yeah, yeah that was incredible. It's a two for one in the top lane. That's going to open up a lot of space on the map for the Hickman team to work. I like what Battle's trying to do. They were trying to pressure top. They were trying to keep that to make it even. They clearly know that Quacker is a threat, but they got a bit greedy. A little too ambitious. Respect was not paid. No. And Quacker let them know. Yeah, and he's gonna just going to come back even stronger. I would, If I were the Battle team, I would not go up there again. I would kind of just leave that lane on an island, and I would try to get somebody else jump-started. The, there is quite the uh, CS score. So when we say CS again, that's creep score. And when you hear us say CS, just think money. Um, yeah. And that is important because you need money to buy items. Items make you stronger. So in this case here, if we look, I believe in just about every lane except for mid, uh, Hickman is currently 
um, out farming battle. But mm -hmm. Oriana, rolling a uh, ruling ocean, is is holding his own there. And, and, um, that, and that's been pretty even. And that kind of relates. If so, if, we're gonna mention this a couple times tonight. Uh, if you look at the top of your screen, hold on. We've got a little. We got something oh, going on here. We got the here. flash there. Now you got Ramus coming, coming in from in the, the bottom side. side. And a Shen all The Shen's Shen. got to make this count. Can he come in oh, and get the E off? There was he the taunt. Oh, and the Oriol. Okay. TTP is. Oh, here comes Alara. Okay, it's gonna be a triple knockup. But Galio really, they're gets just, out. Yep. They need to push this in, and they need to get to try to. So they're going to shove this turret here and hope to get a bunch of chip damage done on it. Uh, Ale, uh, Ale is just going to try to clear away the minion wave, but they're going to get some pretty good yeah, damage. Yeah, so on they this they lane. need to try to push and take this tower because one of the things they're oh, giving up is taunt. Dark Quacker. We're going to uh, see Kalisian, Alero. Kalisian oh, can, can he fall. get him? Oh, and they he let him walk out. away. Hey, look uh, at Dark Quacker. Dark Quacker's yep, coming down. Yeah, Jarvan's comes. coming from the top lane. He's coming from top. There are no wards from the battle side, so they and, do not see an angry Jarvan and coming per down. Purple Mist of Doom is three levels below this Jarvan. Uh oh. There he comes. Ruling He's Ocean. going on. Ruling Ocean. Where are you ruling well, there, now? You're the, running for your life. There's the ghost to get away that we talked oh, about. Oh, there's the alt. Uh, and Quacker oh. goes 3 0. What a. So he's onto a really, really nice kill streak in the top lane. And so we've, here we are focusing on the bottom lane has been quiet. We had that one little issue down here at the very beginning, uh, the failed gank that led to first blood by, uh, for battle. But other than that, they've been very, very silent. So here what we're seeing, these are uh, Quacker, and you've seen a couple other champions. Uh, Cookie did it as well, too. They're clearing out wards. So part of success in League, and for all the new League players out there, Vision wins you games. And so they're trying to deny that so they can set up those ganks. A little bit of a poke. When we say poke, that just means you're throwing out some damage. You're not really trying to start a fight. Um, it looks like that Annie is behind in levels. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, let's see. She got an assist. I'm not quite sure why she should be. Maybe she's standing too far away from the uh, the minions in order yeah. to get experience. And there's a huge level advantage here. We got nine to six from J4 uh, to Shen. So Quacker is is kind of got that level lead on Casiglia, which could again we've already seen that Dark Quacker is uh, rolling. This is Dragon. So this is one of the one of the minions that's in the jungle. Uh, and talk to us about Dragon and why this one may be important. So Dragon shows up in four forms. If you kind of look on the wall there, right there, you just saw it change from white to green. So the four forms that I was talking about was kind of the wind, the ocean, the uh, mountain drake, and then the the flame, the infernal, the flame drake. And they all provide different buffs for the team. So the, the wind drake that the Hickman squad just picked up there is going to give them movement speed out of combat. So as long as they're not fighting anybody, they're going to be able to move around the map a little bit quicker. Um, and then we saw it pop up green, and that's going to be Ocean Drake, which gives mana and health to the oh, each team that God, owns that Drake. Got a little something going on here. Can they drop Caitlyn? She oh, is getting oh, oh the Ghost ultimate Ubot. from Ghost Bot. Ghost Bot with a big kill there on Vicious Leaper. He he was just caught there. We had the great gank, you know. TTP oh, and he, here's to... here's a little bit about Ghost Bot. Uh, it's Matthew Perkins. He's a junior. He plays in the bottom lane, and he doesn't know who his favorite champion is. Did Maybe you we'll see what that his out. favorite hot? What did he say? His favorite hobby? I don't know. I, don't, I watch movies. I, I, I appreciate movies. the accuracy in which we quote our our players here. That that is top notch there from <laughs> Yukatsu. <laughs> I do not know what your favorite movie is. Do That's you have a, a difficult movie? choice. So here we are now. We have the dive on the bot lane. Poor Annie. She oh. is. And Ghost just going to get down. Kill. Just go down. Yep. And now we have Galio here taking oh. on Oriana. That's Oriana's great. We could get it. Here comes the turtle. Come on, Purple Mist of get Doom. It, get it. Can he get him? Oh. Can he get him? Oh, he gets oh, he the got He goes down. Oh, here comes Jorvin. Oh, oh, the Quacker oh. gets Ramus. Oh, Purple Mist was great. And the tower picked up. And now Caitlyn's flashing. A lot of action there. A lot, a lot of action. So let's recap that real quick. Uh, in the bottom lane, we had Annie die to the uh, Gosu bot, to Tristana. And then in the middle lane, uh, Ramus caught up with the Galio, uh, Alehiro, and got that kill as Quacker came down from the top and eventually, eventually finished up the Ramus. So there was three kills there in a matter of I don't know, it was, five or it six It was seconds. really quick. We have eight deaths in 11 minutes. Uh, for those watching in the crowd, if you look at the very top of the screen, uh, just to explain that, you'll see that uh, Battle has two kills to Hickman's six. 
The other thing you'll see with the gold coins, that's the money difference. Remember what I said, money is important because it buys items. And there's about a 4K gold difference opening up between and, the two squads. And you know who the richest person on this entire field right now His is? His name rhymes with backer. Yes, Dark Quacker is so far ahead right now, it's not even funny. A hundred, or 50 CS and 4 kills on that top lane. Yeah, he's he is he's beast. I bet we see next game that they take away his Jarvan. Yeah. Um, and then the final thing you'll see up there is the little tower things. Those are the tower count that you'll see. So you'll see that Hickman has taken down one tower. Um, as you take down a tower, you get closer to the team enemy team's base. So those are important, what we will call objectives. And a dragon is also part of those objectives. So I want to give a huge shout out to uh, Vicious Lemurs down here in the bottom lane, the AD carry for battle. He is keeping up for the most part in CS, despite being down yeah. a kill down there. Yeah. And he's played very, very well at the start of this game. So hopefully he can transition that range into some team fighting ability for You battle. know, that's an excellent point because we've also seen TTP do three different ganks bot. And so him keeping up that CS under that pressure, that speaks volumes to how well he's doing. Okay, now here we go. They're going back after Quacker. We got the taunt okay, and the Shen. Ram is okay. Yeah, see, we're scared. Yeah, we don't. We don't want. We don't want anybody that. We just wanted to let you know we are here. It's cool. Quit bullying us. Now we're walking away. Yep. Yeah. Oh, TTP. Now got TTP's two of them here. got two. Now can he grab Annie here? No, uh, doesn't look. Well, they're still messed around here in the. In yeah, the there's. Top there's we're gonna get a goes. big fight in the bottom lane. Yeah, here. Uh -oh, Ghost Super uh -oh, is gonna go for that Annie. Uh -oh. He gets his. Oh, Q right, oh, shoots him away with the alt. Uh -oh. Now here comes the tidal wave on Caitlyn, uh -oh. and oh, she's TTP. going down too. Goes to bot with a double kill, and here we go. Quacker, is he's, he gonna? No, oh, that's discipline. That's why he's a professional. Yeah, or, or very close. Amateurish professional. Yeah. He backed away. He did not get greedy. Remember, kids watching at home, don't get greedy under tower. No, and Hickman's gonna pick up this bottom turret here. They're gonna make this three turrets to maybe, maybe, maybe. There we yeah. go. So three turrets to zero and about a 7,000 gold lane for the Hickman team right now. Yeah, nope, here we go. Battle may get its first uh, tower here. Oriana may be able to push us down mid. And Ruling Ocean. Oh, and here comes and Shen to help out. Shen gonna, hey, they, they may push another one here. There's they two might, of them. If you're going to use the alt mid, you might as well get as oh, much as you can. but here comes Quacker. He's uh -oh. just ruining the party oh. for everybody. Uh, or he, where'd TTP or come tried to, from? He came from the river. Um, and so now they're going to try to chase down Shin. He gets the slow on him. Shin does not have flash. He does not have his E. He's got Tristana now is joining the fight. Gosu bots just trying to pick up more. That's a great dash out of the way. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, Hickman is going to take... Are we here seeing pings for an early uh, Baron? No, Rift Herald. Rift Herald. We're oh, not, Baron's not live. Yeah, Baron, 20 fault. minutes till... Or 6 minutes till Baron. Uh, they're going to pick up the Rift Herald here, which is... Uh, I don't know if you know this, but is commonly being referred to as Shelly. When we talk across all of so League of Legends. So before you engage the audience in your cool League of Legends lingo, why don't you tell us what Rift Herald does? Okay, so Rift Herald, if we can focus up on Rift Herald right there. Um, well, Rift Herald is gone. But it was a giant uh, bug that we're going to see placed down in a lane. And what Rift Herald does is he starts, or she starts ramming her head into these towers. And it's going to take them down incredibly quickly. Yep, here he comes. So here comes Shelly. And she is going to charge this turret right in the middle lane. Boom, and that turret is gone. And now so, they're gonna they're gonna team up and they're gonna try to push this onto the mm -hmm. second turret. Yep, and so we're gonna get multiple turrets here with this Rift Herald. Oh, oh, they downed him. Oh no, she's still there. She's on the turret, and there she goes. So, and that's a that's a really good use of the Rift Herald by Hickman. They take away the center turret, which is perhaps the most important turret in all. And now League of it Legends. looks like they're rotating. They know exactly when that next Drake is gonna spawn, and they're gonna load up and get that next objective, which this is an Ooh, Ocean Drake. We need and, to watch it spawn. And what Ocean Drake does is it gives you a little more health regen, so your health bar will fill up a little more quicker with so, that as well. And it looks like Battle's gonna try to trade for the center turret, the center second tier turret, while Hickman takes away the. Uh, the Drake, but they need to they need to get out because here comes Hickman. Yeah, it looks like you got some pings. They're calling for the retreat. Uh, looks like Battle knew that they were taking the Drake. Like you said, they were going to try to push that middle lane, but they knew exactly when to get out. Uh, Battle's going to have to play a little more defensive here. They're going to need to turtle up, play defensive, try to get a pick. Uh, but uh -oh. here we go, caught off again. Quacker uh -oh. is going to again use There's that spear from dive. Jarvan, and there goes Ruling Ocean. Annie's going to fall next here. Yeah. There's just too There's much. Double kill. Oh, uh, she didn't even get her bear out. No, she didn't. I, in fact, I haven't seen Timbers yet this game. Have you? No, I haven't. Um, and that's a, that's a, could be a game changer if you they, can drop a good Timbers and no, get a stun. Absolutely, you can get you can stun as many people as you can with that. Um, so right now, probably I, I would vote the MVP of this game, though, has to be Go Gosubot right now. He's got six kills and no deaths. Every person he has touched has died. Well, uh, 
yeah, but also, you know, Quacker, even though Battle gave up that, uh, or sorry, we get, or Hickman gave up the first blood, you know, Quacker was the one that got that double kill top that really kind of pushed momentum back in Hickman's yeah, favor. That's true. So Hickman's going to break open the base now. That is the final turn. Here we go. Is another fight. Uh, <laughs> Ghost Ubot is godlike. So yep. on cue, yep. uh, Purple Mist of Doom also goes down. Yep, They're so going to knock down the first inhibitor, and the inhibitor does what for us? Uh, so the inhibitor is going to spawn super minions. And what super minions are, they're these extra big size minions that uh, have a lot of damage and a lot of health and they really take a long time for you to kill so they're going to start marching down the middle lane because that's the lane that the inhibitor is down uh, when we get a chance we'll mouse over and let you see what a super minion looks like once one of them spawns which should be here in about a couple seconds here we go super minion for everybody right oh nope, uh, missed it i missed it noob clicks Right there, there that's what go. a super minion looks like. So it has extra health and extra damage, and it's going to come marching down that middle lane. The other thing for the players learning still to play League, mm -hmm. I want you to take a look at uh, Battle's Jungle. You can see that the Hickman squad has put wards all over the place, so they know exactly where the Battle team is at, and they're really fighting for control of that jungle. Again, I can't harp this enough for those learning how to play the game. Vision wins game. So even when you're down in a sizable advantage, you want to make sure you're getting those wards because a good pick here can turn the tide. Yep, absolutely. So right now we got a little bit of calm. You got battle kind of grouping up, staying together. But because Quacker and Gosu are so strong, they're going to push in both of those side lanes, which is going to force battle to make a decision. Um, do they want to defend um, one of those lanes or do they want to group up as a team? So Principal G, what would you do here? As which team? Uh, if you are battle and you're trying to come back, it looks like they're going to possibly go top lane. But what would you be doing? Uh, obviously, you got to try to clear the lanes as best you can. But I think your 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 defense is going to really set up within the base, and you need to use the structure of the base to try to get a pick. So if you can get a Shen. Uh, maybe a flash taunt on the Tristana and then drop an Annie Tibbers on there. That may give your Caitlyn enough time to nuke them down. But again, you know, that takes a lot of coordination from the team to utilize the CC that they have, you know, available to them. Oh, there's a good taunt on to Quacker here. There's going to be two of them up there, but they are running away. Uh-oh. Yeah, and uh -oh. see, there, there, that's the problem. Yeah. Is Quacker when is you, just so big. He's just going to drop. And again, over on the Gosu bot, both of those kills... And triple. there's a triple kill from Ghost, yep. which is very impressive. He is 10-0 and 0. The, the, there was, it was a good initiation, but the problem is, is you had two tanks, which equivalent to like a, a wet noodle fight. They really didn't have anything that they could do so, to take the damage. So we just highlighted TTP in our screen there because he came in as Zach from all the way across the screen and really had a great knockup, which led to Ghost Ubot getting those kills. It looks like Hickman's going to pick up their second base turret, their second inhibitor. And they might try to push a little bit more here. I'm not quite sure. Yep, it yeah, it looks like they're going to they're try gonna to play push for the game for, here. Play for the end. So there's that super minion. It's going to tank a lot of turret hits here. And this Tristana is just what we call melt down that turret. She yep. specializes in just taking down turrets and doing structural damage. Uh, we may see them pull out and maybe go up and get Baron. Baron is about to spawn, uh, which may be a bit excessive, but... It's a good secure. Yeah, I, I think that it would be smart for the Hickman team to pick up the Baron, walk down the lane with the minions, uh, and that would really provide them with some strength they needed to close this out. If you are, so a little bit of the catch-up mechanics here, because I'm really nerdy when it comes to League of Legends. Uh, Battle High School is going to have an opportunity where all of the minions are flooding into their base, and they can really pick up some quality gold as long as they can last hit appropriately. Um, so this is their chance, as long as they can clear the waves to get back in the game, but it's going to be a lot more difficult with Hickman picking up the Baron right here. Yeah, so again, for those learning the game, Baron provides a buff to the team that makes your minions even stronger. So they can attack, um, they move faster, they attack harder, um, so it's just, it's just bad news all around. Um, Baron in most games can be a pivotal point uh, because it can switch a lot of power to one side. Um, you'll also sometimes see some fights in, in the Baron pit, which would also turn the game. But I think Hickman, what they're going to do is they're going to either go down middle or they're going to go down bot or they could go down any one of their lanes that yeah. are already pushed up and push it all the way in and, and really play to win here. So it looks like they're going to focus on the bottom lane. Uh, Dark Quacker is going to go push that wave a little bit forward. And then they're going to group down there and try to take that last turret. Here we have, and you can see Battle just trying to get rid of those super minions that are flooding into their base. Um, Something that we might see, do you see that ward that is sitting in the Hickman or the battle base right there? Yes. Uh, it looks like it's going to die. We're not, they're not going to get a chance to teleport in behind. And, and battle's doing exactly pretty much all you can do here. They got to send at least one person to clear that topside wave, but they need to stay as a group because the, really the only chance they have here 
is they have to fight as a team and, and take them down. So Hickman's going to go ahead and push this. And, and do I see a Guardian Angel uh, on Gosu Bot? I do not see a Guardian Angel on Gosu Bot. I see an Infinity Edge, a Rapid Fire Cannon. What is um, the uh, what is the little white aura? Oh, there uh -oh. goes Quacker again. Oh, Caitlin. that's a good. Gets out fantastic. That was a good flash there, and also yep. a good all. So in cookie. fact, he, he's still doing damage. Yeah, this is a good. I thought Ghostu Bot's going to go down. Ghostu Bot dies. So we got that. Now they need to push this. Battle's just got to be aggressive. Yep. You got no hope. Go ahead and drop TTP as well too. Yep. He alts out back. He tries to take Shen with him. Oh. Alero is just trying to keep people in base while the super minions do this work. Again, battle has just got to push out. You guys are going to lose no matter what here if you don't get out there and at least fight. So both towers are down. Cookie is low. You got Zack in the bottom here. They're pushing out. Go! Go, Hurley Ocean! Go after him! You, you've got him. you got mana. you got health. Oh, then Hickman looks like they're going to back out again. Oh, there's going to be a lot of minions. This is where you get to pick up that farm. If you're Vicious Lemurs, I'm going to try to last hit every single one of these, get as much gold as possible, um, because you really, really avoided the gank, la or avoided the damage. It was so a, clutch, just, a clutch flash absolutely. there. really got him out of the um, Jarvan ult and the, and the Nami ult. I agree. He has played very, very, very well. Uh, he just needs to find get some items so that he can really take back this game for the battle team. Yeah, if you notice, his uh, Screech score has actually crept above Gosu. Now, granted, Gosu has those kills, <laughs> that, you know, kind of even things or put him way ahead. I shouldn't yeah. say even things out. So, again, you see Hickman playing a pretty Here we safe. go. We're going to highlight Vicious Lemurs because we've just talked about him. His favorite movie is Anger Management, and his most played character is Draven. Oh, I would love to I see a Draven. I would love to see a Draven. That, I, I think, oh, that I think we need awesome. to make sure the crowd really lets Lemurs know they want to see him play yeah, Draven. Yeah, absolutely. Crowd, can we count on you for that? All right, just enthusiasm, just, just yeah, it's oozing out of, out of there. Uh, here's the ulti by uh, Kuki. She picks up Purple Mist of Doom. Oh, Purple oh, Mist of Doom. Yeah, Purple Mist of Doom is in a whole world of hurt. Bit, here comes the knockup. And this the is support. this is gonna be the game. And oh, uh oh, somebody from Hickman's. Oh. Someone's got to hit the net. There you oh, go. Oh, there it All is. All right, good game, well played. First win over to Hickman High School. So as this closes out, just a, a reminder here, we do have concessions sent up, set up in our commons. Feel free to help yourself to those. Uh, please know, though, that our auditorium needs to be kept food and drink free. So there will be a bit of an intermission. And do we have a 1v1 match or no? Uh, I don't think so. Not this uh, time. Hopefully in the future here. Uh, we're going to take a 10-minute intermission. Uh, so we're going to be looking to come back in here right about 7.15.
On behalf of Yukatsu and Columbia Public Schools, we'd like to welcome you to this esports event. We understand a few of you may be new to League of Legends and esports, so here's a quick introduction. Hello? First things first, esports is, e -sports is okay. specifically <laughs> the competitive sector of right, video games, so, uh, where teams recruit players to compete head-to-head. -to -head. Um, and in the past few my years... My name is Drake Porter. I am one of the coaches at Columbia College. Um, thank you. I've been coaching for roughly a little over six years now, um, and they wanted me to come up here and kind of talk about what I do and where I come from and all that stuff. So, um, <clears throat> basically, a, a big aspect of what I wanted to talk about was the value that esports brings um, to people and to kids and etc. Um, <clears throat> that's me. That's cool. Uh, <laughs> so basically. Um, as a kid, I moved every single year of my life, um, and up until now, still, I've moved every single year of my life, and so while I played sports, football, soccer, uh, baseball, basketball, um, moving constantly 24-7 made it very difficult to feel kind of integrated into a team and stuff like that, and so I played games online, um, and whenever I was 12, I found a game called StarCraft II, and I picked that up. And fast forward about two years, and I was Grandmaster in StarCraft II, which is in the top 200 of players. And so StarCraft II is a very respected game. So uh, <clears throat> I maxed around rank 52 in North America. Um, and basically, I went from being a really quiet kid who didn't really have friends and didn't feel like he was going to get anywhere because he's moving every single year of his life uh, to being really, really good at something and being really confident because I was very, very good at something. Uh, and on top of that, getting to travel all around North America and having fans and making money and stuff like that. It was really cool and a massive change for me. Um, however, I identified over time that I felt like StarCraft II was going to dwindle down and die, and so I wanted to pick up another game called League of Legends, which you guys are watching now. Um, <clears throat> I'd say it probably took about a year and a half, and in about a year and a half I was coaching some of the better teams in North America. Um, and uh, over time I started to decide that this is something I wanted to do long term as my career. Um, and so I went and I gave myself deadlines on things I needed to accomplish. So first of all, um, because I moved so much, my grade situation was really awkward and I was actually um, in a position where I could graduate early. And so I set forward a goal for me to graduate early. I ended up graduating high school two years early. Um, and on top of that, I went and established what I needed to learn at the time as a 16 year old in order to kind of lead a team and lead a group of people. Um, and on top of that, to, I guess, survive in the real world because I'd have to move out. And so I went and I learned all those things. And I went and I learned about basic strategy and I went and I learned about all these different things. And come 16, I ended up moving out and I moved to uh, Los Angeles where I ended up coaching a whole bunch of really well-known teams. Um, I don't know, some of you are probably familiar with I, I was in Europe for a while during Worlds, coaching H2K. I coached Alliance for a while. Uh, I worked with Team Gravity. I did work with Fnatic in Europe as well. Um, and basically, I kind of lived the life that I had dreamt for me to have um, after hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of hard work. Um, but the real big thing and the biggest lesson that I learned throughout this entire experience um, was that really the, the difficult aspect of things isn't coping with loss because we lose all the time. The, the hard part is coping with success and winning. Uh, and whenever you're 16, you see all these people out there being pro players and stuff like that, you're extremely excited to get there, but you don't realize once you're there how different things are from what you expected. Uh, and so I was looking around and, and seeing um, <clears throat> Making money was a really weird experience for me, for example, and going out and, and not being able to go places because all the people around me were super famous was really weird for me, for example, and stuff like that. Um, and I started to realize I felt like the work that I was doing wasn't valuable. And so, and it wasn't valuable to society, it was just entertaining. Um, and so I decided that I wanted to go work in collegiate uh, and do collegiate work. And so I moved to Chicago and I started coaching Robert Morris University. Um, Robert Morris University knocked out Columbia College twice, and so Columbia College figured that the best thing that they could do in order to win was to take what was beating them, and so I'm here. Uh, 
And so uh, really what I want to talk about was that whenever you look at the value of sports, what is valuable about sports, uh, you have a lot of just basic lessons that you learn from it, right? What, what's great about sports is that it's fun, right? Sports are fun. Uh, and through that, kids are engaged and kids like doing what they do. Um, and so you can go and teach positive values through something that kids actually like. And so for me, I went and I learned how to speak to people because I was super antisocial because I moved all the time. And I went and I learned how to lead people. And I went and I learned how to balance money because I made money through esports. And then I went and I, I learned all these skills and, and I had all these experiences through esports um, that ultimately led to me being here. Um, and I think that the, I guess the major message I'm trying to get across is that you can take esports and you can turn it into something valuable. It doesn't just have to be some fun little thing that you do onto the side. And that applies as much for kids as it does to parents. Um, and I, I think a big aspect of what my message is and, and my goal in working in collegiate is to allow people to see the competitive advantages of esports because it's fun and it's competitive and it is largely how kids are operating in a competitive environment in 2017. Am I good? Okay. So thank you for listening, guys, uh, and enjoy the games. All right, and we're back. That was awesome. It was really cool to hear from somebody who has achieved so much in uh, esports. You know, uh, we just kind of dabble around with it, but here's <laughs> somebody who's traveling and making money off it. That was really cool. Um, so something we want to do is, uh, everybody, will you give, please give a hand to Blackstar, Josh Owens from Battle, who's going to be joining us for game two. Okay, so now we've switched sides. Uh, Hickman will be on the blue side. Looks like Battle's already started off. Oh, sorry, uh, Hickman started off with uh, banning Kalizga's uh, Shen. Shen. And uh, Dark Quacker's had his Darius uh, banned as well, too. I want to see Quacker on Darius at some point. So, uh, I... Rockridge Squad, could you not ban him just once so we can see uh, it? Uh, they're shaking their hands, no. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Ramus, Shen and Ramus are off the table, so there goes that front line that they had in the last game. Yeah, and, uh, there it is. Yeah, we're not we're not going to see Jarvin well. this match. That makes complete sense. So, what do you think? Uh, five bands for uh, Quacker in the top lane. Well, it depends on how much uh, research that battle's done. They know that the Darius is there. They know the J4 is there. Yep, uh, he plays a pretty mean Jace. He, uh, yeah, I, I, he's got the world is his oyster. That, that's he true. Probably play Vayne top and be okay. Uh, I think he's beat me with that before. We see the Galio now being taken. A lot of tanks. Um, I'm wondering who's left to really initiate. So, okay. some res respect thrown to Gosu bot there, taking when, off the Tristana. When you go 12 and 1 on a Tristana, it's probably not good to have it again. Uh, okay, so Kogma is going to be the first pick for the Hickman Q piece. Uh, and they're going to put that in the bottom lane. Kogma takes a while. Ooh. Okay, let's break from the Kogma for a minute. So, wow, a Vayne, uh, or not Vayne, a Vlad and a Wukong. So, every all the whispers I've been hearing from the crowd and the players, Rockbridge, Hickman, Battle. Kalizga on Vladimir is something that is a sight to behold. Oh, so that's, that's his that's his pocket pick. Oh, well, it's something is gonna go on with yeah. Vladimir is gonna be big in this game. Uh, T TTP picks up Lee Sin, which is probably one of his favorite champions. And now there's your favorite champion, that Mr. Silver. I Kenan. love Kenan. He's this little yordle, so he, he looks like a tiny little rat that throws lightning. He's awesome. And you also said that Lee Sin was a pocket pick for TTP. So when I say pocket pick, uh, when we say meta, yeah, there, there, there it is. Draven. That's Draven. That's Draven. That's Draven. Yasuo. Oh, Yasuo. Okay, so I guess we can get more in depth here during that three minute ban or that three minute uh, wait there. But you got a Wu Kong and a Yasuo. Where and a Vlad? Where are these champs all gonna go? Uh, so I'm gonna probably put Vladimir in the middle lane, Yasuo in the top lane, and Wu Kong as the jungler. Oh, well, maybe. Um, we can see just about anything out of them. You could play all of them in various different places. Um, it looks like Battle High School is gonna ban away Zach, which is what TTP played in the last game. Um, Kalissa ban there, targeting the AD carry, limiting that pool. 
So you already have two prominent AD carry champs taken off, and then a support oh, band. there's my other favorite character. Lulu is awesome. Um, but we're not going to get to see her today. Hopefully That's, another time. It still gives Cookie Nami, and she did an amazing job there. You know, held her own. She, and, and she did very did. well with those ults and well, really well-timed title so, waves. So, uh, Blitzcrank, okay. Uh, I would not be shocked if uh, Hickman picks up a Janna here. Oh, uh, oh but hey, Draven. The Draven locked in. Hey. Give the people what they want. Yeah, absolutely. I, you better be excited. Here comes Draven. Yeah. Showtime Draven. Maybe we'll get a Showtime Draven. There is there we see oh, the Jay's Jay. top lane. I, I, I suspect this will probably be a Janna. Yep, there yep. it is. Uh, it's like you it's like you've seen this before. Uh I I have possibly seen this before. Do you have an orb? What are they gonna pick here? Can I you have go two no for two? Idea. Ma a mouth fight. A support? Mouth oh, fight? Hold maybe? on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yasuo yep. with Wukong yep. and Malphite. Yep. And so why why Mr. Soper is getting so excited here is Yasuo's ult is contingent on somebody being knocked up. And so you have two champs that have AoE, area of effect, so big circle knockups, and Wukong and Malphite. So really battle's plan is uh, Hickman is going to be grouped up and then they're going to ult in yeah. and then try to set up a, a Yasuo ult. But... There's a lot of AD, a lot of attack damage on this team, which makes it really easy for the Hickman squad to armor up. But at the same time, if you start building armor, that Vladimir is just going to go crazy. Because if he get, if this game gets 30, 40, 45 minutes in, you cannot kill a Vladimir. I completely agree, but that's also contingent on Vladimir getting big. That's true. He's going right. to he's gonna have to farm up, get his items, get some kills, and he's really going to have to be that force to reckon with here. I, I, after looking at these comps, I like the composition of Battle High School a lot more than I like the composition of Hickman High School. Uh, but at the same time, it looks like Hickman is on all of the comfort champions. Yeah, these, there's definitely some very some very comfortable champions. Uh, we you've already talked about and highlighted TTV comfort being comfortable with Lee Sin. Um, Lee Sin is one of those high skill champions. He's got a lot of skill based um, skills that you have to aim. I just said skill based skills. Yeah, skill based um, skills. So he, he has some skill based skills. Throwing some skill shots. Yeah, some skill shots uh, that require him landing his Q to really initiate. So I'm curious to see how uh, TTP can bounce around. But, you know, you also have Pennon, which can kind of counter some of that AoE uh, knockup and maybe even the Yasuo. And then, of course, you've got the Janna. Um, Janna in the support bot lane, she's got an AoE heal that can really disengage all of those things. So they yeah. may be able to knock out a well-timed ult, can knock back a, Malf a Malphite ult, and even knock out a Wukong ult before it can get the maximum uh, true. effect. Size there. And Jada was a great pickup after seeing a uh, after seeing a Yasuo Malphite Wukong start. Uh, that was a, that's a good pick by Kuki, uh, and so it's gonna be this is gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I like both compositions, and I'm really excited to see what the uh, Black Star is gonna bring to this to this game. Yeah, the the Black Star with with uh, Malphite support could be could be huge. It's not normally something you see traditionally in the meta, but again, it could be one of those comfort picks that he can really excel on. Uh, what do you think? What what do you think the biggest thing Battle talked about in an intermission? What do they have to do to maybe pull off a victory and force a game three? So I think they're just gonna have to take a deep breath, reset, uh, and and come up with a game plan. It looks like they've drafted champions that they really enjoy and that they like, and they have a composition now. Uh, the last game, it was kind of scattershot. We couldn't figure out what they were doing, but they have a game plan for this game, and I hope that they stick to it. Uh, and they kind of got two big things, that could, three big things that could happen here. One, we talked about the Yasuo. We talked about the Vladimir, but give the crowd what they want. Can you imagine how much fun it would be to have a Draven that's got a bunch of kills? Yeah, and I think not only making the Draven a good point there, I'm also wondering where is uh, Hickman going to get his initiation? You know, sure, Lee Sin can get in there as well, too. Maybe Maybe with a Kennen all but really their team is, is pretty squishy in comparison. Uh, that are. being said, Battle is going to live and die by the Yasuo ult. And that's going to be that Yasuo is gonna really rely on Malphite and Wukong to do their part. So we've got 15 seconds here to get ready. How excited are we, crowd?
That was a great countdown. Now we gotta wait for the game to load in, but that was I was proud of you guys. Yeah, you that guys was got awesome. a lot better than the last game. So, as we did last time, how many people are pulling for a battle upset in game two? There we go. How many pe people feel like Hickman will close it out in game two? Yeah, it's it's a it's I, I still think it's time. too close to call. I agree. How many people are excited that Rockbridge is here? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we have our winner. Yeah. I think that was louder than everybody. How many people are just excited to see League played here at Hickman in this professional setting? There we go. That's that's what it's all about here. It's all gamers coming together and growing the culture. Absolutely. And here we go. We are in. On the rift. So we got... So we're going to get some things loaded up here for you. Uh, right on the screen right now, you can see... Oh, well, they just uh, ran off the screen. Um, but we're going to highlight some champions. you got Dark Quacker with the Jace and TTP on his Lee Sin right now. Um, Yasuo is in the... Uh-oh, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Quacker and Yasuo, they're going to meet up together. Wait, wait, uh, wait. He oh. doesn't want that. He's going to uh, run away. Uh? Oh, okay. Gets that ward down. But yeah, that's a good ward. At least you know where he is. Uh-oh. Vicious Lemurs, what happened right there? Oh, no. Lemurs, we had so much hope on the Draven. Uh, he's Alero's going gonna, to... Is he going to go for it? Yeah, he's, he's the Wukong. He's got time. As long as you back before 1 minute and 12 seconds, you will make it back to lane in time. We promise. We're trying to highlight all the champs. Now, here we go. TTP uh -oh. gets his Q onto Yasuo. Oh, Yasuo's got to burn that yeah, flash that's early. That's an early flash. Now, somewhat the advantage there is, is Lee Sin going to stay on the red side or is he going to go back to his jungle? We so that's TTP. He's on Lee Sin. He looks like the Mui... Uh, what is that? What is that skin called? Mui Tai Lee Sin. Mui Tai Lee Sin. And then you also have Quacker there on Jace. Uh, here's Cookie on Janna. Back to TTP. Back to TTP. Let's, uh, let's, let's go, uh, the yeah, let's go highlight these around here. Finish off Hickman here with the, with the mid. So Alero, which we didn't really call his name much. He's mid on Kennen. And then we go bot lane to Gosu bot. Yep, Gosu bot is going to be... And he broke this out special. Look at that puppy. Yeah, that is that is the Kogma. All right, switching over to battle. Uh, you've got Vicious Lemurs there on Draven. Purple Mist of Doom on Wukong. Black Star, he's that big rock-looking guy. He's on Malphite. And then the top side, like we said, uh, Kalizga on Yasuo. And lastly, Samurai. Ruling Ocean in the middle on the Vladimir, which is, from what I'm hearing, his signature pick. So I'm going to be excited to see this. So this is could be different. You know, they could really see an advantage maybe build through mid lane. And maybe maybe battle builds their team through mid lane. So if Absolutely. top if top and bot can almost hold serve here and just you know continue to farm, if um, if uh, vicious lemurs is able to do the same farming that he was able to do while on that Caitlyn, we may see a more even match. So again, here both teams farming, just kind of picking. You can see Vlad is pushing that lane in. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, uh -oh. purple mist of doom, uh -oh. Wukong. Uh oh. He's uh -oh. gonna. Oh, oh that no. is. That oh, is uh, that's... not how you want to start your your jungle path, and that that's no. a that's a that's a troublesome for two reasons. One, now the team knows where you started. Two, they know you died. Um, I'm surprised I haven't seen TTP go up there and maybe take yeah, advantage of this. I don't, he was flashing around that top side at the beginning of the match and looked like he was going to take the red buff, but he just kind of came back to his own side. Uh -oh. oh, now Draven's in trouble. Oh. That was a good tornado there from Cookie. It was, and she could have very, very quickly got a kill there. Here's Kalizia at the top lane. It's Dark Quacker. Oh, don't step to the others. Oh, I can, oh, I is... see it now. What, did they counter the, no, the Jace got picked second. So you're picking Jace into the wind wall of Yasuo. That's all. I think that's just confident. I think that is the confidence that Quacker is saying, you know what, I'm good. Yep. And so here, here is the Battle High School top laner, um, Mobius Margrave or Kalizga, as he's known up there. He's gonna need to. He's gonna need to hold strong against Quacker in the top lane for this to be a successful game. I also want to point out that his favorite movie is Your Name. I've never heard of that movie. It's oh, oh, thank you from the crowd for helping us out. We're old. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, here we have a trade here again. When we say trade, those are two teams, are two players that are just taking damage. It looks like we got uh -oh. our first gank. Oh, now that we got the support, oh. but it doesn't seem like TTP sees him. No, nope, he switches he's back to away. the Malphite. Black Star oh, may be able heal. to get out of it. Great, yeah, great heal. heal. Oh my gosh. And, and then vicious Draven lemurs. gets the knock away there to help out. Um, I want to say that TTP misplayed that. There was maybe a miscommunication. So here's Vicious Lemur. Uh, he is a junior playing the bottom lane. We've already talked that he enjoys Draven, and his favorite movie is Anger, Anger Management. Management. 
I have. I don't think I've seen anger management. I may have many years ago. So Kalizga appears in the top lane. Uh, what you'll notice is that Kalizga doesn't have mana. He runs off a resource or a wind resource, and so he's not going to have to worry about Dark Quacker when that mana bar gets all the way down there. And Jace is a tricky champion for those obviously don't know. You'll see right now he's in range form, so he can pew pew with his little hammer there. But he can also change forms, and he can turn that thing into a hammer. He can use that to smack people in the face with it. So he's both a range champ and a melee champ. So something I want to point out real fast, if we're looking down at the at the, at the creep score, at the CS at the bottom, Kalizga and Dark Quacker are really holding, they're about even up there. The middle lane is also even. Uh, the bottom lane for the Battle High School team is down a little bit, but I would say that this is a short of the uh, jungle death, a much better start for the battle squad. Definitely much more passive. Oh, Al Ooh. Alero's in trouble there. He had to get out. And you um, can he is low. And you, you, yeah, yeah. you can see why they like that Vladimir pick so much. He is definitely holding his own in the middle lane and is probably going to force the cannon to go back early. I've also noticed that we're not seeing the jungle pressure that we saw from the last game. By this time last game, I felt like we already had a gank top um, yes. and we also had a failed gank bot. Um, so, so the jungle seemed to be very... Com complacent and just getting their farm, especially with uh, Wukong, he's going to need to catch up from that early death. Yeah, it, and I think that's probably what stymied the beginning jungle path, was that death at the red buff. Um, and, but Vuk Wukong and Ramus played drastically different. Ramus has to gank early. Wukong kind of wants, wants to scale up and we get his We got a ping here old. from TTP. It looks like he's trying to get a gank here on Kalizga. Oh, uh, and bottom lane. He's, he's gotten around again. side. He's coming through Tribrush. He's, he's, he's holding oh. off on that Q. Now Kalizga Jace gets the that flash. Now can he finish him off? There oh. it is. First blood. First blood over to the person you do not want to have first blood. And, and you know, I think he's four for four in high school League of Legends matches on first blood. He did not get first blood last time. No? No. Oh, first okay. blood was earned by battle. I stand in. Oh, I, you're right. First blood wasn't got by battle. In why, the bottom lane. why? First blood, uh, you hear us say that and you see us get excited. That brings over 400 gold over to the person who draws first blood. So while it's not necessarily a game breaker, it does give that lane advantage over. And you'll start to see Quacker use that to his advantage. Um, mm -hmm. Yasuo or Kalizga teleported back to lane. Uh, but it doesn't look like uh, Quacker lost much health in that exchange. No, it doesn't. And Kalizga's just going to need to uh, get behind that tower, kind of like prep up. Uh-oh, here comes here Vladimir. Oh, oh, my goodness. Cannon's trying to get to uh -oh. that stun under tower. Oh, and he, he lives. lives! He lives, he gets out. But, hey, we had to see the blue buff. That's the true. We did have to so see the blue buff. I, don't, I didn't see how much health that it was, Well, Alero looking it over on the there. screen there, it's not a lot. Yeah, he just had a sliver. That's... Uh, Vlad is not, cannot be happy about yeah. that. Ruling Ocean is starting to just dominate that. Not dominate, but getting very close to dominating that middle lane. You might say he's ruling he, he, an ocean. Ah, <laughs> he is ruling that middle lane. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh, that's that toxic culture we don't like. Oh, here comes Kalizga. He gets, a, gets that all oh, on there Oh, and he too. just saved his life with that wind wall. Yes. And then is he going to go back or is he going to stay in there? Are we going to see a no, second engage? They're going to... They're all chugging health pots in the top lane. Uh, we see that Kalizga has learned his lesson. He's got that ward and tribush as well as mm -hmm. a ward river. So here's that that Draven pick is kind of falling behind a little bit. He's a uh, 14 CS behind Gosubot and that puppy looking thing. Um, there's the puppy. Again, uh, other than Lee Sin, we haven't we haven't seen Purple Mist since that death to Red. Oh, this could be uh -oh. trouble. Quacker can leap in here. He gets the uh -oh. wall up, and there there it is. So, Quacker over with two. Uh, Purple Mist is going to need to get up there and apply some pressure and yeah. not, over, not give up another kill. Yeah, I agree. Uh, now, just to show off some of the cool little fine details of the League of Legends game, there is a ton of pop culture references. So, everybody look at Alero right now. Does anybody recognize that green little hooded figure? Do you recognize I, him? I, I don't. Enlighten us. Yoda. That is a Yoda? It is a re reference to Yoda in the middle lane. How many people knew that? One? Two? Okay, one person. Okay, maybe I'm just that, maybe I'm just that much of a nerd. You have confirmed you're king nerd. I, I will take the king nerd category. That is Good okay job. with me. Uh, so again, this is a very, very passive game. I think it was already six to two. At 11 minutes in? It was. Uh, and we had our first dragon taken, and the uh, camera did not go to it. What dragon did uh, uh, Hickman So it looks take? like Hickman picks up a mountain drake, which is going to help it destroy structures a lot faster. Um, 
it's not probably the greatest Drake to have early in the game, but any Drake is a good Drake in my opinion. They're really going to hope for an Infernal uh, later. And you see that Kog'Maw, Gosu Botch is pushing, bullying Draven, getting yep, some absolutely. damage there on that tower. Uh-oh, watch out for so, TTP here. Oh, here we go the, now. Topeak with the flash and the Q gets the ult onto uh -oh. the Vicious Lemur. But uh -oh. I don't think Topeak's anybody knew Topeak. Oh my gosh, Draven Cash is in! Wow! Oh. Once, a, once again, I don't know if there's any coordination there from Hickman. Uh, we saw TTP come in, but it did not look like the wave was there and people were not ready for it. You know what, though? We can absolutely see why Vicious Lemurs likes the Draven. He played that extremely well in the bottom lane to pick up not only the kill, but also the red buff. Oh, and there's oh, a little oh, whiff missed opportunity, by... but Here then comes it comes oh, Great all from Cookie. Great all by to Cookie disengage there. disengage there and push those champions away. That was well done. So here we are back in the top lane. These two, Kalisius just trying to catch up. You know what? His farm is not bad for dying twice. He's only down 16 CS in the top lane. And he can make himself some force if he can get that static shiv as his first item. I'm, I'm, I guess with the, with the Yasuo, you have no choice but to build damage. I thought maybe he would have built a defense item to maybe even things up. But, you nah. know, when you're Yasuo, you just go all in. Uh oh. Uh, and this is, again, trouble. Yasuo may be able to get out of this. Uh... Will we see Quacker change over? Quacker lets what? him walk. He... He didn't switch into his range form and uh, pick him off there. I'm a little shocked to see that. You what know what? You? I'm not going to question a Diamond 1 because he's better than me. That's... He, he is. You're he, right. He, <laughs> he, he, has, he has shown that he would beat me soundly in lane. So It'd be both of us. Maybe he's together. just comfortable pushing the wave to tower, getting his farm, and coming on back. Yep, he picks up a serrated, uh, serrated Dirk, a Caulfield's Hammer. I didn't get to do the items last time, so... Yeah, yeah, go go nuts with it. Um, you notice he's also got that tier, as well as building up that mana. Yeah, so he's going to be building to the late game, and if he survives much longer, it's going to be crazy on his oh, end. Oh, this could uh -oh, be... Here comes Kenny. Kenny. He oh, here's the, the flash, flash the ult, and then here's Phil... Oh, oh! Great pool! What a to great To dodge pool. TTP's Q. Ruling Ocean does a great job to, to see that coming. Hey, TTP's... Kind of unlucky. He's walked into a couple things. He's died. He's gotten outplayed several times. Uh, he just cannot seem to uh, find a footing to get started here. No, but he is making his presence known, which are making people a little bit worried about him. I would like to see Purple Mist do some of the same. Well, he went bottom, and that's when Kuki saved everybody. Uh, but it would be interesting if we could get a, a, some ganks some other places. Hopefully oh, don't look down. You got the TTP. Map. Is he going to go do the same thing? Is he going to try to come through Tribrush here? Oh, on the he's, he's going to ward hop over this wall, and he's going to show up in the bottom lane. Let's see if they can pull this off. Can Hickman fix uh -oh, his communication problems is. that we have? Here he is. He's coming through. He's just going to walk through. He gets there. He and there's the ult. The but again, nobody there to follow up. And, and I, TTP taking unnecessary turret shots. Yeah, I, I think that, that was that's on TTP. P there, he just kind of failed his timing a little bit. So again, for those people who play jungle as well as your bot, you have to coordinate on those ganks, otherwise you just take unnecessary damage and you waste opportunity. And as a jungler, your best thing to do is stay in the jungle as much as you uh -oh, can. Oh, here comes a teleport in by Kalizga. Oh, and a Vlad came around oh. on the bot side. This could end up as a good Draven all. Could be a double kill. Oh, wow. Oh, great tornado from Ruling, Cookie. Ruling Ocean oh, went crazy turned there. over. Quacker came into the fight. Down goes Ruling Ocean. Hickman able to turn this uh -oh. fight around. It's a uh, stun on Blackstar. He's in trouble. They're in full retreat mode. Hickman may push for first tower blood here. You know, for so much action, I'm shocked that we only walk away with one kill there. Ruling Ocean goes down to, I think it was Gosu Bot, and that was about it. Uh oh, here's TTP creeping around. They could 2v1 him. They oh, might, good no, clone. I think uh, just keeping this wave, if TTP can stay there and cut you, the wave. You know what? Fantastic job by uh, Purple Mists of Doom, though, holding off TTP from killing his, his friends. I mean, that's, that's a good play, but they're going to lose the bottom tower. That's going to be the first uh, tower of the game, and that extra gold is going to go over to Kuki, Gosubot, and TTP. So much like the uh, first blood, uh, first tower also gives a kind of gold reward for those teams that are able to do that. So we're starting to see a pretty significant gold lead open up here between Hickman and uh, Battle. But overall, I would say that Battle appears more organized. They do. Uh, somewhat of a game plan. And again, while Hickman is dominating, we have seen some key miscommunications between their bot lane and their jungler. That's true. And something I want to highlight is down in that bottom lane, Draven is behind. Gosubot yeah. has a kill. Draven has a kill, but that's almost 50 CS. That's a lot of gold that Draven's going to have to make up through his passive. 
and hopefully we can get some kills on him so he can just start critting people. So again, one of those maybe more advanced knowledge skills for our players out there. I think what we saw from Vicious Lemur is the reason why he was able to make up that gold difference is Caitlyn has way more range on their auto attacks than Draven. Draven, you more have to be up close and you have to balance those axes as you as you toss them. So I think while Draven was somebody we're excited to see Vicious Lemurs on, um, definitely there in that skill gap. Now we have a gank here. Can he land that ult? Alero's in trouble. He drops the ult. Can he get Purple Mr. Doom? Oh. He does. Now get in the vat. And here oh, comes the Hickman party. Oh, uh -oh. There comes the counter gank. Oh, Draven's going to pick Draven's that up. Oh, Draven from the across tower. from that. Oh, Draven now in trouble. He Or not Draven, not in trouble. He's on Lee Sin. Uh-oh, here comes Gosu, Gosu Bot. Bot. is trying to land some R's. A heal off to Draven, and they will escape. But again... Well timed, good vision, and look what they're gonna do. They're gonna go ahead and group yeah, up for the next dragon. So we traded one for two here. The middle laner Alejo died, and Ruling Ocean and Purple Mist of Doom also fell. Uh, I would give the advantage to Hickman there because they walked away two for one. But I'm real proud of Battle for fighting back and scraping one out there. Draven with the cross, not cross map, but a long distance ulti in order to pick up the kill on the cannon. Definitely a significant improvement in map awareness as well, too. It seemed both squads knew that. Um, and it looked like just when it was about to tip in Hickman's balance, battle that Draven was able to show up, Vicious Lemurs was able to get there and turn things around. Um, I believe the second Drake, Lee Sin, is probably already taking care yeah, of that. Yeah, he's going to be knocking that out real quick. There's going to be an Infernal Drake over there. It is. Oh, it's a, I'm sorry, a Wind Drake over there. Or Cloud, that's what it's called. Cloud, Cloud Drake. Drake. Cloud Drake over to Hickman there. Um, and so they picked up their second one at the game. I'm not quite sure what's going to show up third, but there will be another. So this may be an interesting uh, strat here. Is Battle going to stay mid and just group up and try to push this down? We, we could get an all random, or not really all random, but all middle game going on here in this minute if we don't. Uh, mm. Well, they may uh -oh. they may end up diving Kennen bot here. They're gonna, there's... I think they're going to trade back this, or they're going to take back this turn. Nope, here comes Kuki. And uh, uh, how they're long staying are you on there. Oh, they just go ahead and engage. Can uh -oh. Kennen take down Alara? Oh, oh, there goes Draven back, back into in the, the turret. Oh, he's Lemur. getting he's nice get job. The Lemur's is going to take the turret, but then here comes oh, Bot. There's the puppy. Gosu Bot says, "Who let the dogs out?" Because <laughs> <laughs> he's a dog. Oh. Hey, your jokes fall as flat as mine do. I know. I know. I know. I'm not. I'm still leveling up on those. <laughs> jokes level two. Yes. Oh, uh, here comes Purple Mist. Of Doom Purple with a Mist great says, ulti. "Get off my tower!" He's trying to, and but it may still may cost him Is his he going to fall? Uh, oh yeah, oh, yep, there's the auto attack on Lairo. So Hickman is kind of controlling this middle game here. They're going to take the center turret. Uh, it looks like is Yasuo going to try to creep in on TTP here from above? He might be able to pick him, but what is the level difference? There? Oh, ru er, ruler trying to protect his turret. <clears throat> As you got Yasuo calling for assistance. Oh, uh, I. There he comes. Are we He's gonna, trying he to run now. Can we see Lee Sins are legendary? Can he get over the... Oh! oh fail, fail, flash. fail flash. You hate to see the fail flash. You know who kind of just... You know who left TTP on his own there? Where was Quacker? Uh, I think Quacker is just like, I got, I'm doing my thing. You guys, you guys do you. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> oh, we've got some icon emote flashing here. These guys are really, really confident in their, their abilities. Gosu Bot's going to pick up all the uh, farm in the bottom lane, push the bottom lane in. He Ooh. almost has double the amount of farm as Draven. Yeah, it's and and really no items. He has, When was the last time oh, he yeah, went Oh, yeah, another back? engage here. Here comes the Yasuo. Not sure what he's going to... And he just gets knocked away by Kuki. Uh-oh, Kaliska, are you going to walk in that bush? Uh-oh. Uh, uh, do you he, want that, that Oh, he's he got to get out. Uh -oh. He's got to get out. Wait, he's here there. comes Draven. Oh, there we go. There's, hey, look at the... I'm no. not quite sure what Gosu Bot was trying to do. I'm there. not either. Now, Here now comes Kuki's Lemurs for Kuki. Uh oh, good. Oh, oh, oh he went Draven back to catch the chase. axe. He's got to let that axe go. Uh oh. Oh, Lero could be in trouble here. Yeah, he may fall as well. Uh, no, he's out. Oh, there's the Draven ult. He just it barely clips, clips him. him. Will Ruli Ocean going? Nope, he's not going to go. And look at that. Quacker just on an island. He's kind of playing a PvE game up there in the top lane. Great, Lee Sin. Oh, but this is just a. Oh, a oh a turnaround. Two. This T is not good. You have a low Alero, oh, and TTP, TTP should... is low as well, too, oh, plus the... a low tower. If you knock that tower away, you probably end up with two kills there. I feel like that's a lost opportunity for battle. I guess they're also wondering, they don't know where Dark Quacker's at. He did just clear that ward. Quacker could come down here, maybe clean up and get a double kill. 
Yeah, I think Ruling Ocean and uh, Purple Mist of Doom are going to... Oh, they... Oh, look at that teleport to save the turret. It kind of makes that minion invulnerable. We do, we do have an Ardent Sensor in the game. Good call. <laughs> Jana just picks that up on that last trip back. So you've mentioned that item multiple times. Why is it so important? Okay, so the, here's the thing about the... The current state of the game, there's this item in the bottom lane called Ardent Sensor that provides additional shielding but really what happens is Kuki now has the ability to basically make the Kog'Maw of Gosubot unstoppable. Every single attack that the, that the Kog'Maw does is going to do additional magic damage and heal. It's, that item is just broken right now. Okay, so Riot plans to nerf that at some point. Yeah, next patch. Okay. Yeah, okay. next patch. All right, so a little bit more calm here. It looks like Battle should be able to finish off this turret. There, there it goes. goes. Um... Quacker, again, just pushing in. You know, I'm a little bit disappointed. Quacker may be in trouble here. He has no wards on the there top are, side. There are and do you five. see that red wave? Maybe. Just coming up, looking for him? T coming up to back right in his face. Yeah, that, they, moved, they came up all that way just to go home. I want you to know that all of us are backing afraid of you. Yes. Oh, except for the, uh, except Black for the... Star, I, I, Black Star just seems a bit... He's hanging out in that bush. Now he's going back. Okay. So, again here, now we're kind of moving somewhat out of laning phase into the team fight. We, Battle's got to take advantage of the Yasuo ult at some point. I, they have to have land one of those yet? ults. Uh, we did see one earlier when he landed a uh -oh. kill. Here comes uh -oh. Vlad. Here comes Vladimir. Here comes Ruler. Oh, great by Kuki. But here's, the, here's that. Enough. And Alero's uh -oh. coming around the side. Can he bot land an ult? might fall here. Oh, Gosu oh. bot's fine. Wondering if we can get the Ken in, can initiate, but Malphi, can he get his Oh, there's a off? good stun. Alero's under tower. He's nice. going to take tower hits. He gets lemurs. And oh, then, great. Whoa, but he's going to fall. Yes, but he's going to fall. Gonna get him. Oh, there's the, there's the, the ult. ult. He's oh, going to pick up a kill. He's going to pick up two. Is he going to pick up Kuki? Oh, good wind wall to block her Q. She tries to hit And here's the and chase. There's, there's a, a double, double kill. But you know what? You know what's still happening right now? If you look at your map, Dark Quacker is just... He's not soloing the, the top lane. He, he is. is. He just says, "Forget my teammates. I'm going to go win this game on my own." And it looks like TTP is going to swing over and try to help him. Was Battle's strategy just to ignore Quacker because he'll kill everybody? Uh, you know what? It's it's netted them six kills so far. It's, yes. Oh, great Q there by TTP. He's this guy is coming in. He picks up another kill. He's having a pretty good game himself. You know. You know what, I think the way that Battle gets back in this is Ruling Ocean is just going to pick up some money, and then that Vladimir is going to become really, really hard to kill. He is. He does have uh, the second most CS. He's, he's significantly ahead of Alero. Uh, but again, though, it's, it's, it's got to be that team fight, which could be tip the balance in Battle's favor. Again, if they can land a Malphite or a Wukong. Yeah, we, we are still waiting to see the Wombo combo. It looks like Gosubot and Alero are going to pick up the second Cloud Drake for Hickman here. Uh, and that'll be three drakes to zero. Yeah, so they're going to move real fast. Yes, they are going to move map. real quick. Look at how quick John is moving right there. Oh, she wants to stop to get the ward, though. That's some great warding by Kuki. Yeah, and, and that's part of the support as well, too. Well, I should just say not the support. It's everybody's yeah, job it's to ward and clear wards. Vision, vision is a team game. You, you want to spend as much money as you can afford on vision. Um, and so that way you always know where the enemy is. Speaking of which... Quacker is still on an island. It looks like, oh, looks like Gosu Bot is in a lot of trouble. You get the flash into the ult. Janna tries the ultimate way. Gosu Bot is just somewhat being reckless. That bot lane is, is just being victimized here by gank after gank yep, after gank. And Draven picks up another kill. But um, they're going to take mid tower. They are. So it looks like right now the Hickman strategy is low. Oh, this could be a kill on TTP here. Oh, and Ruling Ocean gets away. He's 2v1-ing in the middle lane and doing a great job. But guess who's going to take an inhib? Uh, yep, Dark Quacker is on the top lane. He's poking away. Th I would not send the Malphite in well, him. Well, we got, we got a Vlad trying to come in, but here comes the <laughs> Quacker oh, says, I got some. You think you. TTP takes that and dies? I bet he would if he did. I think they're just letting him know. I would like to see Ruling Ocean go ahead and go after Quacker. I think it would be a... You know, if he dodges this, goes oh, up. And then uh, there could be Purple Mist of Doom. He Doom goes falls. down. Ruli Ocean, though, took care of the J... Yep, or the, uh, the uh, TTP. Yep, the Lee, Lee Sin, Sin fell. 
Uh, ruling Ocean backs. Oh, oh, he's gonna go for it. Yep. Why yep, not? Here he what comes. do you got to lose? Except for the uh -oh. game. Uh oh. And there's, there's a Quacker. great pool. Quacker is As gonna live. Falling low gets. Oh, ruling gets Ocean gets out of here. Collision needs to walk away quickly. Alero oh, is not is scared, get nope, and he gets him, not. and he gets that shutdown gold as well. Yeah, too. he does. And it looks like they're probably going to be able to force that middle turret here. And Malphite's just soaking up experience in the top lane. He needs it. He is five levels behind Dark Quacker. Well, he also isn't the top. He's the support. It's true. But actually, look at the battle support's got to level up on uh, the AD carry there. The full retreat here. You know, there's no warding. Battle might be able to sneak a Baron. If they could, if they could just go ahead and hustle right there. Now TTP may drop a ward. Yeah. If they could get a pick on TTP, uh, and uh, they're going to get spotted out there using the. I actually don't know what that little plant is called. The scrying. No, not the scrying orb. That's the blue trinket. Uh, some kind of. Oh wow! It's Here's the blast the cone, though. There you go. <laughs> TTP gets blasted away. Actually, he's caught in the enemy jungle. He goes down. Lemurs. So here you go. Now they got to call pings for this. Can is Draven too low? Can they not get the Baron? Oh, he's gonna pick he's up gonna try the heal. Uh, health here. And then, here they go. Are they gonna try this? Yep. Oh, they are. They're gonna start it. You've got Kogma and Janna in the bot. Uh -oh. They just watch need out. to watch out for Quacker. Uh oh. Oh, oh there goes the all from Kenan. Purple mist of doom. You, you are stuck in that pit. Rolling ocean falls to Dark Quacker. Olero is gonna go down. Oh my gosh. There's three of it's three v three v one. What do you think? Uh, here comes Dark three v two. Dark Quacker. Kooky knocks some people gonna... up. Quacker's gonna. Uh, Kooky gets Kooky a kill. Kooky gets a kill on Purple, purple mist. mist of doom. And Quack now the exhaust put on to oh, Yasuo, save. double kill. For Dark Quacker. Dark Quacker. And that and would be ace. an ace. So they're just going to go ahead and head up to top side. So the cool thing about an ace, and new players, this is really important to learn. When you ace a team, you get like 20 to 30 seconds of time where they are not out on the map. You need to go take objectives. And that is something that Hickman did not do. No. They're just kind of creeping around the Baron. Maybe they're waiting for everybody to spawn. Yep, and here's what's going to happen. Gosu Bot, Kuki, and TTP are going to take this Baron away. And that's going to give the Baron to Dark Quacker, who is standing up by the battle base. What is he? TTP, is he going to die? I, I, he may, but I think what's going to happen here is he's going to get a pick uh -oh. on Ruling Ocean. Because why, why would you expect a character to be there? <laughs> <laughs> He's just kind of playing defense uh, in a jungle that has no wards in it by Battle High School. Well, unfortunately, Battle's been kind of pushed into their base most of this game. You yep. see that most of their inhibs, or two of the three of the inhibs, are exposed. So they're going to go ahead and get this, and then they may rotate top and get the third. Uh, TTP could fall here to Purple Mist. Oh, there's that combo that we were talking about earlier. But only and that landed, gets them a kill. They only landed one. If you're going to use that, you've got to try to get at least two. I, push I, for three. uh-oh. Here comes Oh, there oh goes goodness to, gracious goes to Can he get the double? He gets oh. the double on it. it Maybe get the assist here Alero on Ruling really uh, Ocean. He yep. goes down. Kalizga is just like, hey, I'm going home. It's been fun. Yep. I'm, let me back up, get some health. And again, we the Battle High School support is hanging out in the top lane. Nowhere to be found. Oh, now he's somewhere. Yep. And he, oh, just there it is. And yep. now Good he's going to fall. Night. They're going to go ahead and push this in. This may be ball game. They're going to go ahead and get they're the gonna, second in head. They're going to clear the wave real quick, real, real well. And then, let's see. They've got no minions. Oh, there, there's the super minions. Uh, they're going to pick up that ahimeter on the top lane. Uh, Kalizka is doing his best to try to clear that super minion out there and get those waves cleared. Alero oh, wants here blood. Goes the team's up. Battle's up. They might be able to get a pick here. Oh, uh, here we go. No, oh, and we missed with the tornado. Uh, TTP's already setting up for the next dragon. Alero can totally take down this Wukong. Yep. So and the next dragon is actually going to be an Infernal Drake. So that's going to give more damage I, I to... I think I hear a weak attempt at a Rockbridge chant. Let's try. Rockbridge, Rockbridge, Rockbridge. I'm a bit... I'm, Rockbridge, hey, Rockbridge, hey, whatever it takes Rockbridge, to get the crowd energized. Rockbridge, Rockbridge, Rockbridge. <laughs> So I, I think that may be Rockbridge asking for a rematch. I'm not quite sure. Are you guys going to take over? No, no. Okay. Uh, so again here, Hickman's just trying to push in their waves. You see Gosu bot still camping out bot there. He's trying to clear this out. 
Uh, battle is grouping mid. Now, if they can maybe stay grouped and fo force a fight here again, and I feel like where a broken is, record. Where is TTP going? Oh, he's going to join up with the team in the middle. I think we could be getting close to the end here. If they just push in as a team, but if you look at Hickman, they're just straggled all over their place. But that could also be part of their strategy. They know they cannot group up because if they group up and they get an yeah. ultimate that's landed, you're right. It could it could be a major turn in this fight. So it while they look scattered and while they are pushing lanes, uh oh, it's what Here's they have support. To do. Oh, and that, that's a great play by TTP. There goes the battle support here. Purple Mr. Doom with the ultimate. Dark Qu or, uh, vicious lemurs. Oh, oh Lero with a gets massive three of them in there. Massive cannon ulti. Gets the double kill. There's the redemption from Kuki to heal everybody back up. They're going to the tower. They're <laughs> and this is going to be game two going over. Gosu bot's walking in. He's going to try to get the kill. Oh, Gosu bot falls to the turret. Oh, oh, what are we doing? Oh, what the, are we doing? TT. Just reckless. And there it is. Hickman goes 2 and 0 oh. and improves on the record on this. And Small take, intramural season. And takes the exhibition nothing. sweep of both high schools. Yep. Hey, let's give it a good round of applause for both of our teams. We played an excellent game. We want to thank you all for coming out tonight. You guys are an amazing crowd. Thank you again for supporting our players here today. Uh, like was already mentioned, we hope to get started here with a season. Uh, and we hope to see your support for both Hickman, Rockbridge, and uh, Battle High School. Thank you again for coming out. Enjoy your evening. Drive home safe.